Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Steve Martin, and I'm in studio with, of course, Mark Spencer, and we're going to talk motion. Motion. Surprise, surprise. We're going to talk about motion cameras in particular, how to move the camera on a set, and... Yeah, a little bit about 3D and, and how to work with motion's camera, because motion has... I mean, you can work in motion without doing any 3D for years and be very happy. There's a lot of cool stuff. So you're there. just going to stay in the 2D world. In the and 2D gonna... world, yeah. But once you open the 3D world, it's, it, things just open up. There's a lot more you can do with motion. You're walking through the door of 3D. You are, you are. And it's easy to get lost in 3D because it opens everything wide. So I want to show a few tools for navigating 3D space. Right. So I have a little set that's built right here. And by the way, this is based on a project from the folks at uh, motionvfx.com, which they sell a bunch of templates, some really great templates. This is, this is one of an amazing assortment of templates yeah. you got to yeah. check out. We like those guys. And um, <clears throat> so this is one of them. And I don't have a camera in this project right now. And even without a camera, Motion is actually always uh, a, th a 3D app. And what I mean by a 3D app, it means you can always change the position or rotation of a, of a layer or a group in 3D space. Right. Okay, you can, and, and it may not look that way, because if I, I select this group called Set 1, it looks like I can just move it in X and Y, like sideways or up and well, down. Well, isn't right? it true that you're actually looking down the barrel of the camera anyway? It's more of a kind of a world camera, but you're just not interacting sort with it? Sort of, yeah. We're, we're stuck with this view. We can't look anywhere else. And it looks like I can only move this um, in X and Y. It looks like I can, I can only rotate it in, in Z. It looks like everything's flat to the plane. Sure. But there's a, there's a tool uh, right down here in the toolbar called the Adjust 3D Transform tool. And even without a camera in the scene, if I select that, we get some new controls in the HUD, and we get some new controls in the canvas. And now I can actually rotate this uh, around the y-axis. You can see it spin around there. I can rotate it around the z-axis like we did before. I'm just undoing. Now that's not doing like a fake 3D. That's a full. It's 3D what? where you're in like a sphere and you're moving in a, in a true 3D environment. We're moving in a true 3D environment. However, things look a little weird here because that floor underneath those little hexagons look like they're kind of flattening out. And yes. that's because we are in 2D groups. I see. Okay, so although you can always manipulate layers and groups in 3D space, um, you can't really have them interact in 3D space unless they're in 3D groups. And the best way to do that, to make them in 3D groups, is to add a camera. So down here on the right side of the toolbar, is the uh, button to let you add a camera. So what I'm gonna do is click that, and it's gonna ask me, hey, cameras will only affect 3D groups. You know, if something's in a 2D group, it will not be affected by a camera, which is useful. So you're and essentially turning that group into a 3D group. I'm turning all the groups into 3D groups here. I'm just saying switch to 3D, and immediately well, we suddenly see- changes too. Yeah, so a lot of things have happened here. These little icons for the groups have changed this little stack. Here, I'll switch it back again. You can click on it to switch it back. So sure. now it's 3D. Now it's 2D, okay. now it's 3D, okay? Um, the camera appears above these uh, groups in a layers list. And then the thing that I wanted to talk about is in the canvas, there are some new controls in the corners. And I just want to mention these. Uh, in, in a future episode, we'll talk about animating the camera. But right now, just in terms of navigating around in 3D space, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy at the bottom is called the compass. And if you move your mouse over it, it'll tell you uh, how you can move around in 3D space. Now, I'm not gonna move the camera. This is like my view, as if right now we are looking through the eye of the camera at the scene and nothing's changed because motion put that camera exactly where we already were. Sure. Right, so it doesn't really look like anything changed. But we can actually step away from the camera. If I move over the compass and click on top, I just left the camera and flew up to the ceiling. And now you're looking down at the set of yes. the camera. The, what the camera's pointed at, everything. Yes, exactly. So now this, I've heard this called orthogonal view. Why do they call it? Or, that seems like ten dollar word. Orthogonal. Yeah, it's wow. an orthogonal view. I'm looking straight down the y axis, and there is no perspective at all. That's what it means by orthogonal. We're not going to see any sort of normal distortion you see from perspective at right. all. We're looking straight down that axis, so we can see the whole pattern that's on the floor. We can see our little group, a little uh, flat line there, because really in uh, motion in 3D, every every layer is still a 2D so plane, it's like right? a little, like you said, playing card in space. Playing cards in space, yeah, which is actually a uh, Chris and Trish Meyer right. uh, terminology that I've, I've borrowed from them because I think it's such an apt description. And we can see the outline of the camera here. So now we get it, oh, okay, I didn't know the floor really looked like that. We could also use this little uh, compass to go to a right view and we fly over to the right. And it's nice how it animates. So you really get a sense of where we're going to look at the scene. Right. Now we can see it from the side, from that side. Um, we can look at the bottom of it. 
uh, or we can click on this little uh, yellow box in the middle to go to a perspective view. And when you go to perspective view, it's like right now, we just stepped back a little bit from the camera. We're still kind of looking through it, but we stepped back. And that's why this big X is here in the middle because we stepped back. So I wanna show you up at the top right, these controls are called 3D view tools. So you're going to view the scene as you're walking behind or around the camera? Well, what I'm gonna do is now adjust my view. So I've, I've used the compass to go to a specific view, right. and now I can adjust that Got view it. with the 3D view tools. Again, I'm not moving the camera at all right now. Just your view of the set. Right. And the way I remember these guys is, uh, is iPod. Right. So P-O-D, because this is pan, orbit, and dolly. Oh, nice. So they, you know, pan moves the scene around like this, sort of left or up, down, orbit, twists it, and then dolly pushes back in and out. And there we can see our camera looking at the scene. What happens if okay. you click off the camera in the layer list? If we click off the camera in the layer list, the outline of it disappears. We still see the body of the camera. But I if see. we select it, we're able to see uh, this big square that we see, sorry, big rectangle, is the focal plane of the camera. And uh, we cover that more when we talk about depth of field sure. and what that means. But that's basically is where the camera is focused on and what's showing in the canvas when you're looking through the eye of the camera is what's ever in this rectangle. You know it'd be handy to be able to switch from that view to right down the camera barrel at any time. Yes, yes. So now the, the question is, if I've looked around my view and I get a sense, okay, I can understand what's in my 3D world, I can look around, there's nothing else here that I can see, how do I get back? Because if you go back to these 3D view tools, there's no way to get back to the camera. So this menu at the top left is called the camera menu. And you can see right now it says perspective. In fact, if I use the compass to go back to top view, you'll see it now says top. Sure. Okay, and I'll use the compass to go back to perspective view. So if I click that little camera menu, we get a list of all of these different compass options. So it's just another way to use the compass. Mm -hmm. But as you referred to, here's a way to go back to the camera. Sure. Okay. And that you'll use these, once working in 3D, you'll use these keyboard shorts, like, shortcuts all the time. So active camera brings me right back, looking straight through the eye like of the camera. Like if you're looking down the viewfinder of a camera, this is what you'd yes, see. Yes. Yeah. We're now looking through the camera. Yeah. So let's actually change something. I'm going to go back to the top view. And we've got this one set, it's called set one here. It's that shot of San Francisco in a frame and everything with this little, it's got a little back, a little pattern on the floor. I'm just gonna command D to duplicate that guy. Actually, before I even do that, I'm just gonna take the set and I'm gonna move it over here. Uh, let's not do that, let's not do that. I'm gonna leave it there, command D to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna take this copy and I'm gonna move it over here. So you have two identical sets placed yes. in different uh, spatial relationships. Yes, to each and other. in fact, you look at the bottom right corner you like how I'm pointing at this? Because you guys can see me pointing at the screen. That's called the inset yeah. view. This is the inset <laughs> view, right. That lets you see through the eye of the camera, even though we're in this top view so that we can easily position objects in 3D space, we can see exactly what we're getting from the perspective of looking through the camera. So it's like we can be in two places at once, which is a, a nice way to sort of help you set your setup. Absolutely. Okay. So now I've got a second uh, little set over there. I'm going to hit Command D again to duplicate that again, and I'll move it over here. Three, and once again, we get a little sets. SFU. Now, all of these things are controlled, whether you see these uh, little overlays in this grid and this inset view, in this view pop-up menu. See down here, it says show 3D overlays, and the 3D view tools are these things at the top right that are now obscured by this menu. The compass, we know what that is. The inset view, we just went over. The 3D grid is this white lines here that we can see. Helps you align things. Yep. And then the 3D scene icons, if I turn them off, um, turns off all the little icons of the camera or any lights you may have added. So one thing you want to check is to make sure basically all these are checked. Got it. So you've got full access to these tools. So with these tools, you really get to uh, figure out exactly where you are. And I'm just going to one one more tool in here uh, is you can actually look at multiple layouts at the same time. Ah. Okay. So the inset view kind of does that, right? Because we've got the top view and we've also got the active but camera view. But I want it to be view. a split scene, maybe the top view on one side yeah, and, a, and exactly. a left view on the right side. Yeah, so you can have multiple viewports. And that's what this tiny button at the very top right corner of the uh, interface gives you is these seven different ways to look at uh, different viewports. So for instance, I'll do these two side-by-side -side viewports and I suddenly get two different windows, two view layouts or two viewports. So I'll set this one to the active camera and I'll hit Shift Z to fit it to the window and I'll go to the top view for this other one and Shift Z. And really easy way to uh, sort of set up and look where you're arranging objects in 3D right, space. Right, because you can get obviously get disoriented in the 3D world quick, quickly. Very easily. And, and often what you're trying to do is set up a 3D scene. 
and place things in 3D space, and then ultimately fly a camera from one to the other. Which we're going to do, presumably, in the future episode. In a future episode, yes, yes. Now, um, I understand that uh, you've just finished a tutorial on mastering the camera in motion. Yeah, by incredible coincidence, I finished a uh, mastering motions camera, mastering, mastering the camera in motion five. Yes. Right, which focuses on, obviously, how to use the camera in a, in a great deal of depth. Uh, using using some of these awesome projects from motionvfx.com. Excellent. Yeah. So if you're interested, check out our site and uh, stay tuned for more uh, episodes on uh, animating the camera and working with the camera in Motion 5. Thanks for watching.